Hi, my name is Linda. The purpose of this video is to explain the process of recording both your OTP lessons and your demonstration lessons throughout the course. When filming, you are probably going to use either a camera or a smartphone. With both systems, it's very important that the audio signal is of very high quality. And with both the iPhone and some video cameras, the audio signal is not going to be good enough if you move more than one meter away from it, which is going to require some kind of amplification system for that microphone. You can use any type of microphone you like, as long as the quality is good. I'm using just a simple, small microphone like this that I can plug into my iPhone. The reason for the microphone, as mentioned, is to improve the quality of the audio signal. It is possible, using just a small microphone like this, you will not get a good audio signal throughout the video filming process, in which case you will need to use a headphone microphone. All of this equipment will be demonstrated later on in this particular video. I've now set up the equipment we mentioned earlier in the video into the actual teaching situation that I will be using. The first thing that I need to make sure is that everything I'm going to be filming is within the frame of the video shot. Here on this side, I have my clock, which is absolutely necessary during the video sessions for, your, um, for both your demonstration lessons and for any of your OTP lessons. The reason for the clock is that you are not able to edit any of your filming. This is for assessment purposes, and so for every video that you do shoot, there needs to be a clock in frame to show that the video is in real time when you upload it to the system. Secondly, you need to make sure that everything that is going to be used in your lesson, for example, the clock, the whiteboard, and obviously you, is within the frame shown on your camera. So my smartphone is also set up. I'm using my iPhone front camera so that I can see myself during the filming process. However, if you're using a smartphone or a camera that does not have a front camera, you need to make sure that everything is within frame before shooting. However, there is an easy trick to do so if you do not have a front camera, which is to put down some tape on the floor to indicate the frame of your camera. This is important as you need to make sure that when you're walking around the classroom when monitoring activities that you know whether you are going to be in the frame of the video or not. Now you will notice that on top of the board I have written uh, I am reading. I need to be able to see that clearly on my smartphone image so that I know the size of the writing that I'm using is suitable for the video recording. So I have my clock, I have my whiteboard, and now I'm just going to run through some of the things that you should and should not do during your video filming process. As I've already mentioned, probably the most important part of the filming is to make sure that the audio signal is of high quality. Obviously the video signal is very important and the picture that we get, but there won't really be a problem with any modern smartphone or camera in terms of picture quality. One of the main things to consider here is that your camera is actually secure. If your camera is not secure and vibrating, then you can see that shake in the footage and that's what we don't want. Next, it's important for the assessment purpose of both the OTP and the demonstration lesson that you've got the whole video recorded. That means you need to start filming before you start teaching the actual lesson and then continue filming until the lesson is completely finished. Also for your demonstration lesson, it's important to consider a few things. First, you won't have any actual students and therefore the actual timing of your lesson will not be the same as an actual OTP lesson. During an actual lesson, your students will be doing activities. But during your demonstration lesson, you don't have any students, so these activity times will be reduced. Now for your demonstration lesson, there are a few points you need to consider. Firstly, have everything available for your demonstration lesson that you would need to teach an actual lesson. So for example, your lesson plan, your materials for both your activate and study phase, 
as well as any visual aids that you might need to teach that lesson. If your lesson is a straight arrow ESA, then you would be starting out with an engage activity. Now obviously without there being any students, it's a little difficult to show how that activity would take place. But all you need to do is to pretend that the students are there and then effectively answer your own questions. So a quick example. Let's imagine that I was going to be teaching a lesson on a particular uh, grammar tense and um, I wanted to do my engage activity to get my students talking and thinking in English and um, also at the same time producing some information that I could then use when I start my study activity. So now I'm going to pretend that I have three students, student A, student B, and student C. And I'm going to ask them some questions to get the answers up on the board. So for example, on my OTP or demonstration lesson, it would look as follows. Student A, could you tell me what you're doing right now? Thank you. Student A says, I'm listening. So I write that information up on the board and I make sure that it is clearly eligible and that you on the video can see what it says. Secondly, I'm going to say, student B, could you tell me what student A is doing right now? Very good. Student B says he is listening. And in that way, we are demonstrating what would happen in an actual lesson, even though no one is there. Now, don't worry too much how it actually looks in the video. Of course, it's going to look a little bit strange because there's nobody there to actually answer your questions. But what we are interested in is seeing if you follow the actual process of the lesson. You would then move on to your actual study phase. And in your study phase, you're going to be doing activities. Now, obviously, again, there are no students, so you need to demonstrate how the activity is going to work. Then again, you would ask questions from student A, B, and C as to how they would carry out the activity. And then you would say, please start the activity. Now you would leave a short pause to indicate that the activity is now underway. And you might even go out of shot to monitor student A, B, and C. This monitoring process is very important and it should take place for a short time. You would then come back into frame and just continue with the feedback from your activity. Do the exact same thing for your activate phase and you will have your demonstration lesson complete. When you have recorded your video and you think that you are ready to submit it, watch it all the way through to make sure that the audio and visual signal are of high quality so that the OTP assessor can clearly hear what is being said. Also, make sure that the clock is always visible. And don't forget that you cannot edit your video.